I myself, Madhumati, I'm into contact lens department. So today what we are going to see is like the basics of contact lens fitting and different types of lens fitting. And I have given few case scenarios also so that you will have a practical implication of the lens fittings uh, at the end of the session as well. So as we all know, why do we prescribe contact lenses? So definitely, yes, the first and foremost condition would be refractive error. So any myopic, hyperopic, or aphakic uh, patient you're going to see, first and foremost option which would come to your mind after spectacle is contact lens. And again, presbyopia contact lenses are nowadays available, which are multifocal lenses. And again, cosmosis, yes, we can prescribe contact lenses for disfigured eyes, for better confidence for the patient. That we call it as a prosthetic or cosmetic lens. And again, irregular corneal conditions, we all know that people will not be happy with their glasses. So those kind of group of people will be totally relying on the contact lenses. And again, therapeutic purpose, we prescribe bandage contact lenses. And the last and foremost thing, it is like myopia control lenses, which is like nowadays into the market, which is like uh, uh, popularly everybody is saying about the myopia control lens, which is otherwise called orthokeratology lenses. So it is like when to prescribe contact lens. There are two case scenarios. One is like patient demand and the eye practitioner, what they advise. So it should, it should go uh, hand in hand. It's not that patient demands and then you tell the option. It should be like you as a practitioner, you will give the option. And whether to take it or not, the patient can decide. Because few uh, conditions, say anisometropic conditions, where we will be the better person to say you are suitable for the contact lenses. Sometimes patients, they deny contact lenses or they'll be hesitant to take the lenses. In such a kind of situation, it is like our foremost duty, we give them the option. It is like they can either take or not. It is up to their uh, uh, willingness. And uh, age group, definitely we can prescribe lenses for infants till geriatric population. Infants, say conditions like unilateral affecty condition, soon after the surgery, we implant contact lenses. You must have just gone through in your OPD as well. I, I hope so. So why contact lenses are uh, superior than, or it is like uh, over uh, spectacles, it is better than spectacles. So we all know these conditions, As anisometropia, there will be a difference in uh, retinal image size, which is nothing but anisoconic uh, image size. So definitely <coughs> in a study, it was proven that 20% of the retinal uh, image size will be better with the contact lenses than spectacles. And again, in cases of high, uh, say, refractive errors, high plus or minus, or any affective condition, what happens? The spectacles will tend to give a ring effect, ring scotoma. So the side vision will not be very clear for the patient. In such a kind of co uh, combination of patient, definitely the very next option would be the contact lenses. So they will not be happy with the glasses. Whereas when you prescribe the contact lenses, they will be very much happy because they are able to ha have a peripheral field of good peripheral field of vision. And again, irregular corneal conditions. So we do uh, first and foremost, foremost choice after spectacles would be the contact lenses. And prosthetic lens, as I told, it gives a more natural appearance. So that thereby the confidence of the patient, it gets improved. Say in a young patient, having a scarred cornea or totally band-shaped keratopathy or a total corneal uh, opacity, opacified cornea, in such a condition, what happens? Definitely when to move on the social uh, amongst the uh, amongst the people, they will have a little hesitant to move around people. So when you're going to prescribe a prosthetic contact lenses, which is like going to completely match their natural eye, so thereby their confidence is also going to improve, being a small age group or a uh, 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 say a geriatric group also. And again, uh, bandage contact lenses, it helps in the protection as well as for the drug delivery few glimpses or few case scenarios where you will see like uh, contact lenses are better than uh, spectacles. So children, unilateral effects, mostly in the fifth floor, you would have seen cases, uh, children have wearing thick glasses. And sometimes you would again uh, uh, administer amblyopia therapy to those kids. So in such a condition, definitely children will tend to peep over glasses and definitely the contact uh, spectacle vision will not help, will, will be helpful in the amblyopia therapy. And whereas you are going to prescribe a contact lens for a pediatric group or infants, what happens? They are forced to see through the contact lenses. Irrespective, they move their eyes here or there, they are forced to see through the lenses. So thereby the therapy is going to be better and it will be successful as well. 
And second condition, as discussed, an anisometropia. There will not be any diplopia with the contact lenses. If at all they see a diplopia also, that is going to be a good diplopia because so far they haven't seen through that eye. And now nowadays that eye also is going to start, uh, they have started to use that eye. And again, their binocular vision status is also going to improve after adaptation with the contact lenses. And again, uh, wider and better field of view with the glass uh, contact lenses. And different environments nowadays, they, uh, we, we wear a glass and then mask uh, along with that. So in such a kind of com combination, we would have personally experienced that fogginess when you wear a contact lens and spectacles. Definitely all software professionals, you can give them an uh, option of contact lenses. Or anybody who is, uh, say, a medical representative, they are going to get uh, exposed to different environments, say, uh, under rainy conditions their glasses are going to get splattered. Again, you give an option of contact lens. These things we would not think when we are in the OPD. So these are all small scenarios you can keep in mind and you can ask the profession to the patient so that it will be really helpful for them when you are going to give this kind of uh, uh, treat management option. So last but not the least, contact lenses are going to be highly uh, cosmetically appealing than spectacles. So we have different classification of contact lenses based on the lens wear modality, lens wear and contact lens material. So when you take the lens wear modality, you must have come across all these terms. These must be familiar to you as well. So first is the daily, daily wear contact lens, which is nothing but patient will wear it on the eye. Say morning till night, they use the same lens and they will remove the lens before sleep. So this is what we practice in India. And the second variety is extended wear contact lens. They wear in lenses and sleep, sleep continuously for seven days and six nights without removal. So usually this is called extended wear contact lens. All the silicon hydrogen lenses are FDA approved extended wear lenses, but still we are not giving it as an extended wear modality due to the in, uh, uh, adverse events like uh, microbial keratitis or infiltrative keratitis. And third one is the continuous wear, which is like patient will continuously wear the lenses for one month to uh, one or two weeks continuously. Classic example would be bandage contact lens. People will not remove the lens at all. And fourth one is the flexible wear. It is like intentional contact lens. Whenever I want, I will put on the lens or else I can, I'll manage with the spectacles. Irrespective, it can be one week, one month or whatsoever. According to their patient's intention, they will wear the lenses. So other uh, classification would be conventional lens and frequent replacement lens. So frequent replacement, it is otherwise called as a disposable contact lens. So early days, we had the conventional lenses, which is like one lens will be used for a year. But nowadays, this type of material is now out of market. Why? Because these lenses are a little thicker in nature. So thicker lenses, no oxygen permeability or the lesser oxygen permeability. Again, the patient cannot wear for longer hours. Average, they can wear it only for six to eight hours time. And again, these lenses, even though they clean and preserve it well, there are chances of getting deposits. And again, this can lead to adverse reaction. So these lenses are not nowadays practice. We have only disposable variety, which could be like thinner lens, more oxygen permeability, and they can wear for longer hours. And always they will have a spare contact lens in hand. Suppose the patient is a sports person. Even during some special occasion, even they lose the lenses, they will have an extra pair with them. So that way it is going to be advantageous for the patient. So again, based on the lens material, we have a few classification, hard contact lens, RGP lens, and soft lens. Hard lenses, we must have heard about PMMA material, polymethyl metacrate material. So that is like 0% oxygen material, no oxygen to the cornea at all. So that was withdrawn from the market. And second one is the RGP contact lens, rigid gas permeable lens. So the gas permeable, oxygen permeability is going to happen. Here also we have two categories, high decay and low decay. What we prescribe to all patients are high decay contact lenses. So these lenses are a little bit, even though they give more oxygen, these lenses will tend to attract more deposits and the lens flexibility is going to be more. So we tend to ask the patient to change it every six months. And other variety is soft lens. You must have heard about these two materials. So what is the difference between a hydrogel material and silicon hydrogel material? We will just see. So cornea, when the lens is kept on the cornea, it requires some breathing action. So when a contact lens is kept on the cornea, what happens? The total breathing of the contact lens is reduced. Yes. TK by T, another term is there, that is oxygen transmissibility, where T will be the thickness of the material. So based on the thickness, the oxygen permeability changes. It is like inversely proportional, DK by T. So what I mentioned, or I have mentioned was DK, which is oxygen permeability. 
So the hydrogen lenses, it is just a combination of hydrogen plus uh, water. So here water will be the oxygen carrying agent. Okay. So the silicon hydrogen, in contrary, you have silicon rubber and hydrogen combination. Where the silicon hydrogen in the silicon material is going to be the oxygen permeable material. Whereas in the previous hydrogen material, the water is going to be the oxygen carrying uh, agent. So what happens if you're going to increase the water content, say in order to increase the uh, oxygen, if you're going to increase the water content, the disadvantage is these lenses can attract more deposits. High water content lenses will attract deposit. And again, according to FDA classification, we have material classification as high water content and low water content and thicker, thicker material and thinner material. So what happens? Thinner material, high water content lenses, when it is kept on an eye, say for a dry eye, if you are going to prescribe, so there you tend to have a condition called pervaporation. So the pervaporation is nothing but the atmospheric oxygen is going to draw water from the contact lens surface. Again, the contact lens is going to draw water from the cornea. So this consequence, what it leads to is corneal desiccation can happen. You will tend to see some staining and patient will not be comfortable with high water thinner lenses. So just imagine a thin cloth, which is like a, a high water content thin cloth. When it is kept in front of the uh, uh, fan, what happens? The evaporation process gets faster. So the same concept in the lens as well. So we generally don't give a uh, combination of high water content thicker, thinner lenses, whereas we give a combination of high water content thicker lenses. So in the late 80s and the 90s, the hydrogen lenses, earlier they had conventional one. Now they have started with giving the frequent replacement lenses like dailies, monthlies, and biweekly lenses have started to uh, arrive into the market. And again, uh, silicon hydrogen lenses, it got evolved in the uh, uh, 1990s. Till now, it is available in the market. So these silicon hydrogen lenses, it is made up of, as I told, silicon plus rubber, sorry, silicon plus hydrogen, where the silicon is going to be the oxygen permeable material. And the uh, uh, disadvantage of the silicon material, even though it gives high oxygen permeability, it will be like hydrophobic in nature. So because of the hydrophobic nature, the lens will tend to attract more lipid deposits. So in order to combat that, they have given some surface treatment for different generation contact lenses. So whatever we prescribe earlier days, say in the early 90s, it was like silicon hydrogel without any surface treatment. Nowadays, we have given the contact lenses with a surface treatment, which is again reducing the deposit attraction and poor wettability is reduced with the silicon lenses. So whom should I prescribe contact uh, silicon hydrogen lenses? Any patient who is going to have a classic complaint of say dryness or tired eyes or redness at the end of the day, then just blindly you can give them an option of silicon hydrogels. In our clinic, we practice in a way we give to all the new, new neophytes all the new contact lens wearers, we give the silicon hydrogel option because most of it is like involved uh, based on the profession. Suppose they are going to be a software professional. They are going to sit under the AC environment. So definitely uh, silicon hydrogel lenses are going to be the best option. And again, any patient, say traditional contact lens wearer, they have been using 10 years, 15 years, uh, normal hydrogel lens. And those people, it is better to convert them to silicon hydrogen lenses because they give a vague history of dryness or irritation or lens discomfort at the end of the day. So in such a kind of scenario, it's better to shift them to silicon hydrogel material. What happens is like so far their cornea will be devoid of oxygen because of the low oxygen permeable material. So suddenly if you're going to give a silicon hydrogen lens, definitely the cornea is going to get more oxygen. Myopic shift can happen. So suppose a hydrogel wearer, his vision, uh, sorry, his power is minus 8, for example. It goes to minus 8.5 when you're going to prescribe a silicon hydrogel. This myopic shift of minus 0.5, it is expected from all the studies. It is like revealed from all the studies. And even evidently we have seen in our clinics also, people when they shift from hydrogel to silicon hydrogel, this myopic shift is happening. And you can just tell the patient it is not the true eye power change. It is because of the physiological change, the power change has happened. And again, bandage lenses or therapeutic lenses, you can definitely prescribe these silicon hydrogen lenses rather giving hydrogen lenses. 
And again, advantages, as I told, it eliminates oxygen hypoxia because of the high oxygen permeability, reduces the dehydration, good wetting ability, and uh, high resilences are more prone to protein deposits. Proteins can lead to GPC, giant papillary reaction. And then, uh, whereas the silicon high resilences, they are prone to lipid deposits, and it enhances on high comfort and lower risk of high infection because here also we have the frequent replacement lens modality. And definitely these lenses, one more advantage, silicon lenses will be a little stiffer in nature. Suppose if you are going to give a patient a hydrogel lens and silicon hydrogel lens, initially they will say ah, these lenses are a little stiffer in nature. So stiffer meaning it is going to be helpful in a way that the patient can easily handle the lenses, mostly the older patients, or you're going to give a patient for high refractive error. So hydrogel lens, they can just flip up when you're trying to uh, put the lens or you are when you're going to give teaching in the clinic. Whereas this silicon hydrogel lenses, they are going to be a little stiffer nature. So it can again uh, gives a better handling for the patient. So uh, just let us see how to go about uh, fitting a soft contact lens. So you must have come across soft contact lens fitting. Yes. So whom do we prescribe? Yes, or, or for all the simple myopic, hyperopic conditions. And again, when the astigmatism is less than one diopter, I, we prescribe uh, soft contact lenses. So whenever you write a prescription, so glass prescription, we write it as diopters and cylindrical power. So in contact lens, we write the lens prescription as base curve, power diameter so base curve how will i derive i will derive from the with the help of keratometer and power i can derive from the refraction value and diameter i can derive from the hvid so hvid is nothing but horizontal visible iris diameter so whenever you're going to fit a soft contact lens it should be two millimeter away from the hvid suppose my hvid is 10 so i would prescribe a contact lens say soft contact lens of 12 millimeter uh, contact lens so this is how we go about fitting a soft contact lens so all the parameters are ready. Now I'll put the lens on eye. So after I put the lens, so definitely we will see the lens fit assessment. So in the lens fit assessment, you will have to see the centration, coverage, and movement of the lens. And again, you will see the push-up. So here centration means the lens should be like properly centered on the cornea. So this has to be evaluated, say, in primary gaze and lateral gazes also. So whenever you're just asking the patient to move their eyes, just make sure the lens is not crossing the limbus. It should be like within the limbus because whenever it's going to cross the limbus, again, they will have foreign body sensation and in different cases when they are going to have a uh, uh, move on in a regular day-to-day uh, -day activities. So make sure the lens shouldn't cross the limbus. And again, the centration of the lens, whenever the patient go, is going to uh, look it in the uh, lateral cases, it shouldn't go. Uh, it should not come come uh, come across the visual axis. Here you must have seen a contact lens which is slightly decentered. Can you see the edge of the lens in the uh, cornea? So this is actually a flat fitting contact lens. And again here, this lens is completely decentered lens. So patient is looking superiorly. I'm seeing a lens which is slightly low riding. So this is also not a well centered contact lens. So the, we can say this lens is a flat and decentered lens. So this we can see in as an optimal lens. So the coverage is good, centration is good. So two millimeter away from the limbus, the lens is centered well. So next is a toric lens fitting. So when you touch and feel the lenses, toric lens and soft lens, you cannot make out any difference at all. Both will look alike. Suppose you take a toric lens and then you're going to see in front of, under a bright light, you will see some scribe marks. So these scribe marks are going to tell whether it's a soft lens, toric lens or a uh, soft contact lens. So this toric, scribe marks are not just they doesn't in, denote any axis it is only for uh, uh, used as a reference mark for us to say whether the lens is going to rotate on eye or not so it does not give any uh, axis denotion denotion at all so the historic contact lenses when do we prescribe we prescribe for all astigmatic power say from minus 0.75 to till six, six diopter cylindrical power we prescribe. So why to prescribe for minus 0.75? You might think sometimes we can prescribe as a soft contact lens also. Na? So it all depends on the patient's occupation again. Suppose if you are going to be a software professional or some sports person mostly involved in, uh, in the intermediate vision. So they will have a difference in clarity between a spherical equivalent lens and a toric lens that they will complain of shadowing of letters if you are going to prescribe a soft uh, spherical contact lenses. So again, they will tend turn up to you having complaints of headache, eye strain, or asthenopic symptoms after you have given the lenses. So you what you can do is in the clinic, you just, in case of small 
cylindrical power say minus 0.75 just give them uh, put the uh, uh, respective power in the trial frame and show them the difference between a toric lens and a spherical equivalent lens definitely most of the cases patients would prefer the toric combination lens rather than the spherical equivalent so um, the toric contact lenses it should not rotate on eye correct so the because it has both the components on eye uh, on the lens surface spherical and cylindrical power so this lenses shouldn't rotate on eye so they have incorporated few stabilization techniques for the lens to make it stable so different companies they have different stabilization technique so soft toric fitting it is similar to soft lens fitting we will not do anything else uh, magic here apart from that uh, centration coverage and movement you would see for the lens rotation so lens rotation we have a, we follow a rule called lars rule lars rule is nothing but l a r s left add and right subtract meaning that with to with the respect to the examiner so i am sitting here and the patient is sitting in front of me with respect to me the lens is rotating towards my right or towards my left i would write it so this is how i would put a uh, i would see for the rotation so case 1 so this patient was 24 years female software professional wears glasses for about for 10 years past and the visitor to know about the lasik options deferred due to low packy so they were, this patient was referred to contact lens uh, clinic so this was the pgp minus 9 with 0.5180 and minus 7.5 with 0.75180 six six vision and retinoscope and acceptance was more, more or less the same uh k reading was 44 45 it is like one diopter shade difference and left eye is also one diopter difference slit lamp examination right eye was with the normal limits and left eye uh, patient had mild meibomitis so what contact lens options would we give to the patient any guesses just give a try which eye soft lens or which eye toric lens or both eye toric lens okay you're right so we can give them option right eye soft uh, spherical lens and left eye either a toric combination lens or a spherical combination lens spherical equivalent lens so what we have done acceptance based on the acceptance and k reading trial lens was put 8.7 with 8.5 so usually just please keep in mind suppose if you have the spectacle power is greater than plus or minus 4 diopter you will not prescribe the same power in the contact lens you have to do some vertex conversion for 14 mm vertex distance so this chart is available in online so you can go through that so all the hyper hyperopic power the power will be slightly higher than the spectacles when you are going to prescribe contact lens all the myopic power the lens power will be lesser than the spectacle power it is all because of the effective power calculation okay so you must have seen uh, heard about the calculation formula if uh, spectacle contact lens power is equal to uh, fsp by 1 minus d fsp okay this is the formula which we apply for calculating the lens power so this is like all tabulated form it is given in online you can please go through that so here in this case right eye minus 9.5 with 0.5 cylindrical so if i'm going to take a spherical equivalent minus 9.75 so if i'm going to see the vertex conversion it comes close to minus 8.5 so right eye i put a trial lens minus 8.5 the lens fit was optimal over refraction will be done and it shows plano and i have prescribed 8.5 lenses but for the left eye uh, minus 7 lens was put and i am getting an over refraction of 0.75 so the very next option would be the very next option for the left eye would be the patient is not accepting spherical lens toric option yes so we are fitted with a toric lens here so toric lens uh, 8.7 minus 0.7 with 0.75 10 axis i have selected see the spectacle uh, axis is 180 degrees okay so whenever you are going to select a trial lens just make sure you are selecting a trial lens closer by to the spectacle rx it should be like plus or minus 20 degrees this way or that way you can prescribe uh, like you can take the trial lens as the first initial lens so here i can take 180 na i can take either 170 or 160 trial lens or i can take 10 or 20 degrees trial lens and then directly fit on eye if in case uh, uh, this is one criteria and again do not prescribe any like do not select a trial lens say quite opposite to the spectacle rx here 180 don't put a lens of 90 degrees and then start the trial that there is completely like you will not get good results at all okay the vision achievement or the rotation you cannot assess at all so try to prescribe or take a trial lens plus or minus 20 degrees this way or that way so here we have selected a trial lens of uh, 10 degrees axis 
So this lens was rotating 10 degrees towards my left. So to, I'm sitting here, patient is sitting here, towards my left, the lens is rotating towards 10 degrees. So 10 degrees, according to Lars rule, left add. So left add means I will add 10 degrees to the, not to the trial lens axis, what I have put, I will add to the spectacle RX. This is very, very important. This is where we make the mistake. So whatever the corrections or modification I'm going to make, I will make only in the spectacle RX, not with the trial lens what I'm putting. So here, if I'm going to add 10 degrees, it becomes 180 minus plus 10 is uh, 10 degrees. So the final prescription, what we would give for the left eye is minus 7 with 0.75, 10 degrees. Got it? So just an update about what all lenses are available in our clinic. So soft contact lenses. So spherical power, you please remember whenever you are prescribing to your patients, because patients will ask whether I'll get any disposable lenses for this power or not. So you please remember this. So spherical power till plus or minus 20 diopters, disposable lenses are available. Okay, monthly disposable lenses. And again, astigmatic power minus 2.75 cylindrical in regular disposable variety. Until minus 6 diopters, we can customize uh, cylindrical power for the patient. And spherical power is also uh, available till minus 12 and plus power with plus 6. And we can customize toric lenses for uh, uh, high toric co combination prescription. Okay. So far, we have seen soft lenses, toric lenses. We'll move on to the RGP lenses. Any doubts so far? All clear? Fine. So RGP lenses, you all know these lenses are small diameter lenses, which will be like resting on the cornea. So these lenses are placed on the cornea, and it creates a tear layer between the lens and the con contact lens and the corneal surface. So this tear layer is going to be the real hero, which is going to correct the power. So this masks the irregular and regular astigmatism. So it is available in various diameters. The normal diameter would be 9.2 and 9.4 millimeter. So this is very important. Only these three things can happen whenever an RGP contact lens is fitted on eye. So first thing, either the lens can go very closer to the eye closer to the eye meaning you have to define in three positions central position mid peripheral and uh, peripheral uh, position so just looking at the first picture so here you see some dark patch so which is nothing but the lens is completely aligned to the eye aligned in the meaning the lens is like completely touching on the central surface central cornea and you are seeing a mid peripheral pooling so here also the pooling, the, the distance between the lens edge and the, uh, sorry, the cornea and the lens surface, you see some lots of tears, uh, tear accumulation. So this is, this indicates the lens is really flat on eye. Okay, so the second picture is like, you see an uniform distribution of tears all over the, from the center to periphery, which we call it as a diffuse pooling, which is attained in all optimal fitting contact lenses. So here you see a large amount of uh, difference between the center and the periphery. Center is large, tearful. So here you parallelly you see the fluorescent pattern with having a central large pooling and mid peripheral you are seeing a touch which indicates the lens is steep on eye. Okay. So when do we prescribe RGP lenses? When the patient is not happy with spectacles or they are not happy with the uh, contact lens, say soft contact lenses, or they complaints of uh, re really complaints of ghosting or shadowing of images, starburst or glare while driving, then the very next option would come into our mind is RGP lenses. And again, all irregular corneal conditions, ectatic conditions, post refractive corneas, we would prescribe as RGP lens. So motivation factor is very, very important. So off lens, you can easily motivate the patient because the lens uh, will not give so much of irritation to the patient's eye. Whereas RGP lenses, it is made up of a hard material. So definitely when the lens is put on eye, definitely patient will not be happy. They will immediately say, I don't want the lens. So motivation from the practitioner, it should go to the patient. So how you will motivate the patient? Suppose you are referring a keratoconus patient to a contact lens clinic. So what we would tell the patient is like, these lenses are going to be only for the vision status check. We are not going to prescribe at the first shot at all. So because they will have a poor vision with the spectacles. So when we are going to tell them like this lens is only for vision check, they will, after uh, doing all the trials, say they tend to accept first and then they will allow us to put the lenses. They will, uh, after adaptation, when you're going to show them a crisp and clear vision, their mentality is going to completely change. 
because earlier they do they they haven't seen their real uh, real world with a clear vision at all and after suddenly you're going to put us rgp contact lens the vision clarity is going to improve even though compromise they, they compromise the comfort but this he, here the psych, psychology of the patient changes and they go by the time they go to the consultant table they will be in a state of accepting the lenses so this we have seen for many patients so it is from the practitioner you have to motivate the patient only for the vision check and later you can tell them other uh, signs like adaptive signs like the lens will show some amount of foreign body sensation because it is like a hard material kept on the most sensitive part of the body so anybody for this matter say in the whole world will have this kind of symptom but with time the lenses are going to be better for the patient so this is how we convince the patient and it is all again up to the patient to take the lens or not but after seeing the clear vision most of the patient they tend to accept the lenses and again corneal toracity when it is high uh, for betterment of vision we prescribe the rgp lenses and mostly against the rule astigmatism where you see a, is a steep uh, uh, horizontal meridian in that case the lenses can slightly decenter so usually vertical astigmatism say uh, with the rule astigmatism because of the complete close and uh, opening opening of the eyes the patient's clarity of vision will be much better for the with the rule astigmatic power group of people than the astigma, uh, against the rule astigmatic people. This we have seen. Again, after putting a contact lens, some amount of residual astigmatism we, we have seen over the contact lenses because this horizontal, uh, only partly it has got corrected with the spherical design. Again, patient has to wear a cylindrical glass over the lenses. So as I told before, like uh, we do, uh, we select the parameters. So contact lens prescription, again, base curve, power, diameter, base curve with the help of topography or keratometer, power based upon their refraction value and diameter based on the HVID. Here HVID minus 2 mm, we select the diameter. Suppose my HVID is 10 millimeter, I would select a lens of around 8.5 or 9 millimeter likewise. And again, uh, here we have to mention about the thing, thing uh, just uh, uh, assess the pupil size. Why pupil size? Because suppose you are going to treat a scarred cornea or some uh, traumatic cornea, traumatic eye. In that case, there, there are chances you will see some dilated fixed pupil. Or if the patient is already midriatic pupil due to trauma. In such a condition, you cannot fit a small diameter lens because optic zone diameter comes into play. What is optic zone diameter? So in any contact lens surface, the central portion which, which carries the power is called the optic zone. Diam optic zone. So here, whenever you're selecting a, a contact lens for a scarred cornea, or sometimes you're going to select a lens for a dilated pupil, try to fit a larger lens so that the optic zone is going to correct, uh, cover the visual axis. Thereby, patient doesn't again complain of glares or glare or halo of halloing of uh, halo so halo images. And lid position is also important. If the lids are very tight, you cannot fit a normal diameter lens. Or the patient is having a small palpebral fissure, then you cannot fit a larger diameter lens. So all these you have to take into consideration whenever you're fitting uh, the RGP lenses. So here also what I do, I do take the keratometer revalue. So 44 and 46 is my K value means I will take the flat K. So here flat K is 44. The corresponding base curve we will select and then that base curve will be the initial base curve for the patient. So here also we do the assessment like centration, coverage and movement of the lens. Apart from that, you are going to see the fluorescent pattern, which we have in, we don't see in soft contact lens. So soft lens, we see centration, coverage, movement and push up test. And toric lens, centration, coverage, movement and we do the, uh, uh, we check for the rotation and we do the, apply the last rule. Here we apply the fluorescent pattern. We just uh, check for the fluorescent pattern and then according to the fluorescent pattern, we just change the fitting. So case two, 30 years old female, bank manager, you was using glasses for the past 10 years, uh, had complaints of uh, doubling or shadowing of letters with the glasses upon computer usage. And uh, she had frequent headache and eye strain with the glasses, mostly at the end of the day. And there was no contact lens usage at all. So this was the glass prescription, Plano with four combination. And left eye was Plano with four combination, 180 degrees, six by nine, six by nine in both eyes. So again, patient was not happy with the spectacles, repeated uh, uh, shadowing of uh, images. So refraction was done. It was showing minus five cylindrical in refraction, but she accepted uh, even with minus five, six, 7.5 alone, it improved, not much. Again, not happy with the spectacle vision. 
So this was the K value, 43. And slit lamp was normal. There was no evident of, evidence of uh, K, K sign, KC signs. Okay. And, uh, and again, the, there was no scissoring reflex also when we, when we are doing retinoscopy. It was showing irregular, uh, sorry, regular uh, reflex. K was 43, 47. So it was like close to 4.5 diopters. Uh, corneal astigmatism, left eye was 43.5 and 47. It is also close by 4.5 uh, diopters of corneal astigmatism. So this was a topography picture. So can you please comment on the uh, topography? What do you see there? What pattern? Yes. So this indicates the patient is having reg OK. And what could be the diagnosis? Having shadowing of letters, no evidence of KC, symmetric bow type pattern. What could be the diagnosis? Definitely it's not KC. So the steeper meridian is, which is a steeper meridian? So the red color indicates the steeper meridian. So which is a steeper meridian? Vertical. So this is actually regular astigmatism. Hmm? So what options would you give the patient? You found the refraction value, right? So this is the refraction value, plano with a cylindrical combination. What lens options would you give to the patient? OK. Uh, here, you are seeing as zero sphere and more cylinder. So usually, whenever you're thinking about toric combination, it should be like 4 is to 1 ratio, it, ha it should happen. So either the sphere should be sphere and cylinder should be equal, or the sphere is high, or the cylinder is less. You can prescribe toric lens. It cannot happen like low spherical and high cylindrical. So this is what the prescription, combination of prescription. What happens when there is no spherical error, only you have a toric, let's say cylindrical power, the lens can easily rotate online. So in such a case, definitely toric lens option, we cannot prescribe. Again, when you prescribe also, the patient would come and say, I am not having clear vision. My vision is fluctuating because the lens is not stably, uh, like uh, constantly sitting on one particular axis. So definitely toric contact lens option will be ruled out. So we can prescribe conventional RGP lenses or soft torics. Here, why I have told about toric, toric option. Uh, few conditions when the lids are very tight. So in such a condition, when the lens is kept on eye, there are chances the lens can, sorry, the lids can hold the uh, lens and the rotation can be prevented. And sometimes when the patient is highly intolerant to RGP lenses, they want some amount of compromised vision with the contact lenses, then we can think about prescribing soft torics, but they have to compromise their clear vision, which will like uh, that momentary fluctuation can happen with the toric lenses. So we can prescribe soft torics, but you have to tell the patient about the vision fluctuation and lens rotation, because unless and until we say the lens on eye, we cannot really tell the patient that they will have a stable vision. But whereas when you are going to prescribe RGP lens, Compromising the comfort, the vision clarity would be better with the toric lenses. Or you can give other options like special design lenses like rose scale lens, scleral lenses, or mini scleral lenses. OK? Yeah, that can also be prescribed. Again, piggyback, meaning you will put a soft contact lens on top of that RGP. So soft lens will give them a good comfort, and RGP is going to give them a good vision. But one and only thing, they have to maintain two lenses, two solution. That maintenance part is going to be relatively uh, difficult for the patient on a practical scenario. So here, uh, as we all uh, discussed, it is a regular astigmatism. Usually RGP contact lenses, this is how we select the base curve. So once the cylindrical power is greater than 2.5 diopter, we use a stabilization technique, where, which is nothing but we just select, select the steepest uh, value. Here, the uh, uh, flattest value is 7.83. So we have fitted with a contact lens uh, two to three steps steeper. So 7.6 is the base curve, minus 3 is the power, 9.2 is the diameter. So this trial lens was inserted on eye. We have done the static and dynamic fit assessment. So can you see the lens is really centered on eye? Hmm? So the lens is well centered. It is covering the pupil, and it is away from the limbal, uh, limbus. OK, and here left eye also, the lens centration was good. Coverage was good. Coverage here meaning it's the pupillary coverage, not the corneal coverage. So what pattern is this? So this we call it as a dumbbell pattern. So here we are seeing a vertical dumbbell of pooling. So wherever you are seeing the steeper meridian, that meridian you will see some pooling. So this is actually vertical dumbbell of pooling. Here also you are seeing some vertical dumbbell of pooling, both eyes. So over refraction was done over the trial lens. 
vision was 6 by 6 with the contact lenses patient was very happy no doubling of images no shadowing of letters except for the compromise of the comfort initial comfort otherwise patient is happy to take the lenses and we have prescribed high dk lenses for the patient where the patient would change the lens every six months got it yes a regular asking see you yeah yeah so in the previous slides i have spoken about three patterns right that will be optimal fitting here optimal fitting central touch and central pulling so this is actually steep fitting pattern and this is actually optimal fitting pattern so when the cornea is normal say the astigmatism is uh, uh, less than three diopters you would get always this kind of optimal fitting say diffuse pulling there will be equal uh, uh, spreading of the tear film between the lens and the corneal surface when the lens is touching the cornea say in case of uh, steep corneas when you're going to fit a contact lens, classically this happens with all the keratoconus patients. So keratoconus flat fitting lens, this kind of pattern you would see, but this is not at all an ideal fit. What happens? Centrally, the cornea is rubbing, the, sorry, the lens is rubbing the cornea. On a longer end, what happens? Even though their vision will be good, the cornea will start to get scarred. So uh, always you have to, like uh, every six months, you anyway, we are calling the patients for a review. Whenever you're calling the patient, Without lens, we would see the corneal staining. Any staining has happened or not because of the lens fitting. We call that staining pattern called swirl staining. You would see some swirl kind of staining because of the flat fitted contact lens. Uh, and patient would classically say, I am happy with the lenses. I don't have any vision issues at all. Why do you want to change my lenses? But you need to explain to the patient because all the flat fitting lenses will give them crisp, clear vision because it, what to say, that orthokeratology, uh, uh, Thing is happening the cornea is pressing sorry the lens is pressing the center cornea cornea is getting reshaped and the clarity is also getting improved whereas typical uh, steep contact lens fitting where you see some central accumulation of tears patient will not see a clear vision at all they say when i blink and open my vision is clear because tears are accumulated between lens and the cornea once they blink they it just pushes out and they see a clear vision so that time the lens is coming into contact. So that blinking effect is giving them a clear vision. So this is a classic symptom, what they would say if, uh, in, uh, for all, say, steep fitting contact lenses. So uh, flat fitting contact lens, vision criteria will be good, but the fitting on a longer end, it is not at all safe for the cornea. Whereas steep fitting, again, corneal edema can happen because so much of uh, tear film is going to sit on the middle of the cornea. Corneal edema can have hypoxic signs can develop. And this is the ideal pattern we, which, which we would see. So that dumbbell pattern, what we have seen, which we all, which we see in all cases of regular astigmatism. So with the rule and against the rule astigmatism, we see this classic dumbbell pattern. KC is three point touch. So irregular cornea fitting, definitely this is going to be challenging for you whenever you're fitting an irregular cornea. So normal cornea, what happens, whatever the light is striking on the lens corneal surface, it is going to get uh, like focused on the retina. Whereas in case of irregular cornea, it is going to get scattered. And again, obviously patient will have a symptom of ghosting of images, shadowing or uh, reduced clarity, distorted images and all. So when do I prescribe or when do, uh, which conditions are considered to be the specialty fitting contact lens group or any irregular corneal condition greater than three diopters of astigmatism, all post, uh, uh, say, ectatic corneal condition or post refractive areas, post PK, RK, post lastic condition, intacts, and again, a corneal scarring due to trauma or post pterygium excision, you will see one axis to be a little steeper. Definitely glasses will not be a good option. So what are the challenges mostly the patients will face? So this is how they classically seen on a real, uh, see on a real life scenario. They'll not be happy with the glasses, doubling or distorted images, glare, photophobia, night glare while driving. Headache and eye strain, they repeatedly say because their distance vision also will have a distortion and near image also, whatever see, N6 will not be clear for that patients. So you must, uh, you just try to make a note of few patients having spectacles, say k conus patients having spectacles and then if you make them read, they will not read N6, say advanced conditions, they will not read N6 at all. Even they do, they see that uh, N6 target, it will be some shadowing of letters or some doubling of images they will see, they will tend to squeeze their eyes and read. So on a repeatedly say they are going to strain their eyes, they will end up with a headache or eye strain problem. So these are all the challenges faced by the patient.
So how we are going to solve it? We can prescribe all the specialty contact lenses for the patient. So we have discussed about the conventional RGP lens and then corneal GP lens, which is nothing but little larger diameter lens, but within the limbus, say 10.8 or 11 millimeter uh, uh, diameter lenses. And special RGP lens, you must have heard about the term Rose K contact lens. So that's a brand name. And mini scleral lenses, 14 to 16 millimeter diameter. And we have scleral lenses from 16 to 20 millimeter diameter. And piggyback lens, as he has told us, it will be like a combination of soft and RGP lens. And final option is hybrid lens. So what is hybrid lens? So the last image, what I've shown is the hybrid lens. So centrally, you will have a RGP lens for vision, followed by you have a skirt, which we call it as a soft lens skirt for comfort. So this is like, they really it is going to be helpful for the patient because both are going to get solved. Vision, comfort, both are going to get solved. But one and only disadvantage of this kind of uh, combination of lens material, the junction, there are chances more deposits can go and easily accumulate, one thing. And second thing, when the patient is going to rub and clean the lenses, the edges, because of the difference in age, they can easily, the lens tear can happen fast. So this is a, the disadvantage of the lens. So this is case four, 16 years female, uh, medical student, OD complaints of blurred vision with the glasses, complaints of a frequent change of glasses, no complaints with the glasses for the left eye, frontal headache after prolonged reading, and there was no contact lens use at all. Uh, PGP was minus two with four 180, vision was six by 12 in the right eye, left eye it's like a simple myopic casting, which is like six six. So left eye no issues at all, only we are going to concentrate on the right eye. So complaint of shadowing of letters here, refraction was done. Left eye was showing clear reflex, right eye was showing scissoring reflex. So we tried to improve the uh, with a cylindrical correction, but it got improved to, till six by nine, not, that didn't improve much. Left eye was paka, no issues. And OU complete flesh's ring was seen. So let us see the diagnosis. So patient having classic uh, symptom of frequent change of glasses. So shadowing of images. Incomplete flaccid ring, scissoring reflex, center steep cornea. So what would it would suggest? K conus, keratoconus. Okay, you are right. So keratoconus. So all these are classic symptoms and signs we see it in the, see on the patients. So management option usually for mild keratoconus we prescribe spectacles or toric lenses. For the left eye it was minus one with one. So we need not have like hundred percent have to prescribe RGP. You can leave the patient with a toric prescription as well. And uh, mild KC, either spectacles they can manage or they can go in with a soft torics. Moderate KC, RGP lenses or special design lenses. Severe KC, RGP or mini scleral scleral lenses. Advanced KC, scleral lenses or hybrid lenses can be prescribed. So here in this case, what option would we give for the right eye? Because left eye was okay. Right eye, what options can we prescribe? You want to see the prescription minus one with four one and uh, one eighty, I guess. So this was one minus two point five with four point five one eighty six nine vision. Left eye it is minus one with one. So what prescription we can give? What uh, sorry lens option we can prescribe? RGP and then Rose K. You're right. So conventional RGP Rose K lenses or soft torics, but vision will not be very clear. Customized storics as well and scleral or mini scleral lenses. If in case the patient is highly intolerant to RGP lenses, the very next comfortable option would be scleral lenses. So this is the K value 42 and 47, close to 4.5 diopters. Left eye, it is only one diopter. So usually this is how we select the base curve for our uh, keratoconus. So based on the severity, we select the base curve. So when the keratoconus is advanced, you tend to see, select a base curve slightly steeper. Steeper meaning the 6.5 millimeter base curve. Suppose it is like early KC, you can directly take the on K value. So here, uh, again, um, the value say the base curve and the diameter of the lens, it is all like selected based on the severity of the keratoconus. So again, when you see a nipple cone, try to fit a small diameter lens. When you're going to see a global cone or a, 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 say what to say, oval cone, so there will be complete decentration if you're going to put a small diameter lens. In such a case, you try to fit little larger lens, maybe 9.5 millimeter lens you can select. 
So this patient actually we started with a small diameter 9.8.5 we started and the, the lens was showing decentration. Can you please see? The, can you see the lens edge? It is just crossing the, like at the edge of the pupils. Can you see here? So this again patient will complain of shadowing of letters. The contact lenses will not, will not give them a good vision at all. Sorry for the image clarity. Left eye, it was actually well-centered lens. Here you can see in the fluorescent pattern. So the pupil coverage is also good. Large diameter, better centration has happened. So we prescribed a little larger diameter lens, as I told, for oval fitting lenses. So lens was put on eye. Static and dynamic fit assessment was done. So this was the, OK. So here you, are, you can see the fluorescent pattern. So actually for the left eye, uh, you can see this is 0.1 touch. Here it is actually faint touch. This is 0.2 touch and here it is 3 touch. So this is what we call it as 3 point touch actually. Here you can see this is touch 1, touch 2, touch 3. So this is what we call it as 3 point touch. Left eye it is almost actually diffuse pooling. It is almost diffuse. Right eye you can see the 3 point touch. The vision also got improved to 6x both eyes. So patient was happy with the lenses. So we have prescribed lenses. But if in case you are going to prescribe a toric lens for a soft uh, keratoconus patient, just give them a minimal supply. Don't give for one year continuously because the KC can progress. And again, they will, at a point of time, not by this time, they are, uh, they are not getting shifted to RGP lens. But after a long time, say, in the near future, if the KC is going to progress, then that point of time, they have to rely on the RGP lenses. So you just uh, mention about the RGP contact lens and their adaptive symptoms also to the patient. Maybe in their future uh, days, they, can, they might have to shift to the RGP lenses. Again, they cannot stick on to the toric lenses for better vision. So uh, what is like uh, what is the difference between an RGP lens and a rose scale lens? So rose scale lenses actually it is like a customized contact lens. Both they look alike. When you take and see, both the lenses will be the same. But rose scale lenses they have a fix. They don't have any fixed optic zone diameter. Why I'm talking about optic zone diameter because that is going to sit on the uh, nipple of the cone, say at the at the uh, uh, apex of the cone. So when there is a large optic zone diameter, the amount of pressure on the cone will be large, which happens in cases of all RGP contact lenses. Whereas rose key lenses, it has a small optic zone, which will not like completely give more pressure on the conical cornea. So thereby the patient uh, say the cornea is not stressed much. So you can customize the rose key contact lens for a different patient. So mild cases, moderate cases, different cases, I can customize. Say I can customize the central fitting, peripheral fitting, all can be done and achieved only with the rose key lenses. Whereas RGP lens, it will be like standard base curve, standard diameter for all the patients, irrespective of low, uh, say uh, mild KC, moderate KC, severe, whatsoever, I cannot make any changes at all. I will give, give the same parameter. So there you will have a compromised fit when you are going to prescribe an RGP contact lens. So whenever you are seeing like you cannot give any good fitting with RGP lenses, then the second option would be, would be the rose scale lenses because I can customize the contact lens according to the patient's curvature. Here you will have not have any fixed optic zone diameter, variable diameters are uh, optic zone diameters are present, which will not stress more on the cornea. Again, the optics of the lens, it has an uh, inbuilt uh, aspheric optics definitely it is going to control the abrasions and again the lens material is going to be high decay material so patient can wear for minimum 12 to 14 hours in a day and uh, these lenses mostly we tend to advise after cxl so that patient wear the lenses for say one to one and a half years they can wear the lenses so piggyback lens as i told before we will fit a soft contact lens for comfort and on top of that, because uh, all the keratoconic or any ectatic cornea, you will not see and you will not get any keratometry value when you're doing a manual K in advanced cases. So in that such a case, if you're going to fit a soft contact lens, you will be able to easily take the keratometry value. And on top of that, you will fit an RGP lens. So this soft lens, whatever you are prescribing, try to fit a zero power or minus 0.5 power contact lens, which should be like high oxygen permeable, say you can prescribe silicon hydrogel lenses why because two lenses on the cornea oxygen has to be taken care so you have to prescribe a lens with a high oxygen permeability 
So you do the fit assessment and uh, the, as I told, the practical difficulties to solution they have to maintain and uh, they will have sometimes confusion in uh, changing the solution and all. So the next part would be bandage contact lenses. So BCL, we prescribe for symptomatic relief, healing purposes, protection of the cornea and sealing all the small wound repairs. And again, optical in, in enhancement so that uh, because the cornea becomes better and the optical enhancement can happen. So have you all fitted bandage contact lenses? So what, uh, any difficulties you had while fitting a BCL or you, in choosing the diameter, you had any challenges? You, uh, will you like write and uh, give it as a, as a uh, the prescription 14 millimeter, 16 millimeter, right? Likewise, you write and give you, how do you select that base uh, diameter? And I'm asking in which condition you're going to fit a larger diameter and small, a normal diameter lens. So you are all aware, I think so. We have different diameter in, uh, in uh, BCL. So normal diameter lenses, actually all the silicon hydrogel materials, say you must have heard about these, uh, familiar about these company names also. Bosch and Lomb Pure Vision and Acuvue Viasis and Aeroptics. These are all like silicon hydrogel lenses, FDA approved BCL lenses, which is of 14 millimeter diameter. It is available in Plano, Plano power as well, uh, minus 0.5 power. So uh, we can prescribe a 14 millimeter silicon hydrogel lenses for all, say, uh, normal cornea with a, uh, epithelial defect. So uh, normal diameter lenses can be fitted for such conditions. Larger diameter, mostly we would think about whenever you're going to prescribe any uh, for any bleb leakage or any ectatic or proud graft cornea, or sometimes if the, if the cornea, say, uh, uh, in the, at the periphery or so you're having more sutures, Say post PK again, you will fit, trying to fit a little larger diameter for better wound repair. So in such a conditions, you would think about a large diameter. So large diameter lenses, we have it 15 from 15 to 20 millimeter diameter lenses are available. So these lenses actually it has to be replaced every month. So you just tell the patient, I know like uh, each and every condition is different, but if it's going to be a chronic condition, you're going to uh, prescribe the bandage contact lenses, make them change the lenses every month. Okay, why? Because if they are not going to change the lenses, this, these are all the images which we have taken from all the pa patients. So all these are deposits after three weeks or fourth week lenses. So again, this cannot again uh, have any uh, impact in healing of the, uh, I, or again, the patient will uh, tend to get a secondary infection problem. So try to change the lens or make the patient change the lenses frequently. That means like every month. So we do have specialty lenses in our clinic. So we have scleral lenses. So again, uh, prosthetic contact lenses, you must have seen prosthetic contact lenses, uh, say centrally clear zone with a power. So we do have prosthetic lenses with power. So when do we give such a kind of combination? Suppose you are seeing any aniridia patient, say uh, uh, a fakic aniridia combination due to trauma. Patient repeatedly say, I'm not able to say, go under bright lights. Please think about prescribing prosthetic uh, type C lenses. We have different types. So the one which I have shown in the picture is the type C lens. It is nothing but uh, you will see central clear pupil followed by mid peripheral iris pattern, tinted pattern. So this will again, a uh, central portion will give a vision. And again, this uh, uh, mid peripheral uh, dark portion is going to control the um, photophobia. So we have, we do have X-chrome contact lenses. So have you ever heard about this type of lens, X-chrome lenses? So if in case you tend to see any colorblind patients, say red green deficiency, they are for occupational purpose, they are into some, say they want to join naval army force or they want to get involved in some chemical industry for clearing their uh, exams. For occupational purpose, we do prescribe this kind of uh, X-chrome lenses. It's nothing but it's given in the dominant eye. So how to just judge whether the patient is really going to be helpful with the X-chrome lens or not. So in the OPD, if you are going to check the color vision, if it's going to be 0 by 21 in both eyes, and you put a red filter and the vision is going to get improved, say 21 by 21 with the uh, filtered glass, then definitely this patient would be an ideal candidate for X-chrome lenses. So suppose if they are asking you more about the X-chrome lenses or for betterment of the uh, color vision, say for occupational purpose, you can think about giving the X-chrome contact lens option. So this will not be like continuously worn on eye. Definitely this will reduce the contrast and people will see, have a, a, a clarity, like whatever, how they see is like, 
when we put a red tinted glass, how we see that kind of image, they tend to see the contrast is going to get reduced. Only for that particular purpose, they can use and then they can remove the lenses off. And multifocal lenses, so we do have multifocal lenses with different uh, additional power, say from plus one to plus three diopter contact lenses are available. And nowadays uh, we do have a multifocals in daily disposables also. And again, myopia control lenses, we have orthokeratology lenses. So these orthokeratology lenses, again, when you are uh, like uh, going to see many uh, small kits, say myopic progressive kits, then you can think about prescribing then myopia control, say ortho key contact lenses. So my take home points would be like, so whenever I see a prescription having contact lens, say anisometropic prescription, high refractive areas or unilateral cafe kick on children, definitely my mind would go think about contact prescribing lenses. And the soft lenses, the power is available till plus or minus 20 diopters. Sill correction, as I told, till minus six diopters. Daily multifocal lenses are available nowadays and prosthetic lenses, even we can incorporate the power. And uh, RGP and soft contact lenses can be customized for unique case. The meaning is like you can customize a uh, RGP or a soft contact lens for microcornea, megalocornea or some like extreme and unique cases. They, it, there are possibilities are there. Again, scleral lenses, it is not like totally scleral lenses for uh, ectatic corneas or uh, irregular corneas. We can prescribe for scarred corneas also. Scarred corneas, sometimes RGP will not give better vision. So a larger diameter with a larger di di optic zone or a larger geometry, it is kept on eye. Definitely vision enhancement as we have seen for many of the patients. So you can think about giving scleral lenses for even scarred corneas. And again, uh, scleral lenses for bleb leakage and therapeutic purposes. We have started to try, like bleb, bleb leakage cases, we generally give a larger diameter bandage contact lens. Sometimes it does not arrest the bleb leakage. So in studies or in few in unique cases, what we have done is like we have put the uh, scleral lens in the office and then the patient would be like in the clinic only, say they will wait for a few hours and then the, it will be like a continuous one week process or one, two weeks process. So the healing we have seen, say in therapeutic purpose, the uh, corneal staining, it has gone better. The corneal surface has gone better with the scleral lenses. Rather giving them and then just uh, 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 for, for them at home, the patient will wear the lenses in the office and then we will see from morning till night. So for, from morning till evening, and then we would see any progression is happening with time, with time meaning with, with days, continuous uh, course of uh, one week or so. Again, orthokeratology lenses, it is not only for myopia control. Few professions, people would always want to get rid of glasses. They would not be advisable, like they would not be in a mind to take a LASIK treatment or again, permanent contact lenses. So a sports person, you can think about giving them orthokeratology lenses. Thank you.